Good morning, everybody. Hi, Brina, Sandy. Good morning, Donna. I started just a little bit early because um, it's beautiful here. It's beautiful here too. I have some had was having a little bit of a technical difficulty, <laughs> so I figured it'd be better to start early than to not be able to start at all. So I'm just copying and pasting my um, live feed. What I usually try to do is I try to paste it into the last two things I posted. That way it's a new post and in case you're looking for it, it kind of helps you find it if maybe you can't locate me. So thank you for the shares. Good morning, everyone. I just have one more little thing to see if I can paste it into and then we'll be good. Yeah, there we go. So if you ever can't find me and you think I'm supposed to be live, if you go into the very last video that I did, I'll see if I can get my phone link. I, I usually use this to film with, but I don't know. It didn't charge. So what I usually do is in the last video that I did, so this is the video from last week, I will add a comment in the bottom or in the top as it may be. And this is the link to the newest video. So if you click it, it'll take you to the new live video, if that makes sense, okay? So if you ever can't find me, that could that would help you, most likely. So let me pull this up so I can see you guys. Hi, Tammy, hi, Tammy, hi, Tammy, hi, Tammy. Hold on, let me hit that you could, here. Woo. You. It's like um, deja vu, double Tammy, hi. So that's my, uh, my, my upline, Tammy White, and my downline, Tammy Stoffel. Uh, they're on opposite coasts, ironically enough, which is kind of funny. <laughs> so, good morning. You got notified. Yay, that's awesome. Hey, Christy, thanks for stopping in. And thanks for joining. Thanks for uh, sharing, Diana, Miriam. So, I know, I'm just a couple minutes early. I was trying to avoid a few little technical difficulties. So, while we're waiting, I'm going to show you this really beautiful card I made uh, on on a whim the other day. It's a Tammy party, right? Exactly. <laughs> I I was part of this um, blog hop that Janet Wakeland hosted. It was a blog hop basically for the blended season stamp set and the stitch seasons bundle. So if you want some ideas, there's some really good cards over there. A lot of people have used these flowers, which just goes to show you how popular they are. Um, but there's a couple really great cards using the leaves and also using just some of the sentiments because there are a lot of really pretty sentiments. If you guys remember, I was part of a card swap I shared with you the week before last. But anyway, so what I did was I thought of a real I thought it'd be really neat. I've seen people b do these before where they kind of interlay these dies and they'll have two images. This is actually paper from the Animal Expedition Designer Series paper stack, believe it or not. It's the other side of the hippo. And I thought I wanted something very like neutralish because I know a lot of people struggle with neutral cards. So I did this. What I did was I cut the Designer Series paper. I actually cut all four layers. So I used all three of these on one sheet of paper. This is three and three quarters by five. And I took the layers out and I kind of interspersed them. And then I used this missing layer here on the inside of the card. So I still had one more little piece, this middle piece. I was going to do something with it, but I kind of thought it was a little bit of overkill. So I didn't want to be ridiculous. But the other cool thing you could do if you were wanting to make a lot more of these cards, this is another idea for you just to get more for your money and more for your work. So what you could have done, and I should have done this because this would have been a really neat idea, was to cut the, the designer series paper layer with all of these and then cut the layer that I colored in with the flowers because then I could have had extra layers. You could have made two cards from one. So we could have layered like this piece and this piece, or this one I should say onto another card. So that would be a really cool idea. And very recently, and I don't know if I wish, I hope I have them right here. I, and I want to show you exactly what I mean with just the interlaying pieces. So I was part of this, uh, the card swap that Tammy White hosted. And Linda actually did this on her card. So if you can see there, this is a die cut. And then what she did is she probably cut multiple leaves 
of different colors and she laid the different pieces into it so it's like a it's a interlay of a die which is really neat so you could do that with this completely and then you could have used this layer if we cut it out underneath if you could pretend that this is still the full flower and then you would have two cards at once so really really fun idea and you also could if you wanted to you could have layered some of the white pieces on the inside but I, the thing I like about this most is that it makes this look like it's a different dimension if you're looking at it, and it's all flat. Same with this. It's all one flat dimension, except for this little sentiment I popped up. But I think it gives a lot of depth to the card with really not a lot of work. It's just layers. And then I also have been doing a little bit more of this layering lately with the extra layers underneath, because I think it looks pretty cool. However, remember, if you are... Um, being conscious of trying to save your paper you could always cut your layers like for example if this was your white layer and you could cut something out of the middle and then if you're layering stuff on top that's going to cover it up you could use the whole middle of the card for like punches or whatever it may be so just to um, keep that in mind pretty cool idea this interlaying these which I really like so I got to tell you one other thing with my uh, share here real quick. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I seriously am either going to have to start printing out this catalog ahead of time or waiting and just ordering catalogs because I ordered a couple things and I'm like, I don't know what I did. I was totally having a goofball moment, but I ordered one thing. I just ordered the dies and another thing. I just ordered the stamp set. <laughs> so I thought I had like all my codes worked out and everything. But apparently I didn't, so I got to go back and do another order. But I want to show you one other card that I may, um, I'm going to share with you soon. This is a, a bokeh technique. So bokeh in photography, a jagged bokeh means that you have a very um, muted background. So it kind of plays up to the things that are in the forefront. So we actually did this with different colors of inks. And then we used, instead of using the uh, white craft pad, because we did this for the stamp club, I was afraid maybe, you know, cross-contamination, I didn't want to get blue into the white. What I actually did was I took my, um, get this without knocking it over, I took a clear block and I put some of the white craft ink refill on here, add a little water to dilute it. And then we made a um, template, and everybody kind of used the same one. I told them they could use different ones if they wanted to, but we punched some holes out with punches and just moved it around. But it made a really, really cool card. This um, idea I actually got, so my friend Rhonda, she always asks like if there's specific cards we can do for stuff. So I got this idea from um, the Serene Stamper, and I cannot remember her name off the top of my head, but she does really amazing cards. Very relaxing. She's got very relaxing music in the music in the background, which is pretty cool. So if you um want to check her out, she does do a lot of really awesome cards. But we'll do this someday soon. And um, again, this is going to be uh, as of September. This will be my real full time gig. So I do appreciate all of your support, the comments, the likes, the shares, any uh, purchases that you do in my online store. I truly appreciate it. I am trying to hitch my way one notch up to Silver Elite. So I'm almost there. So I'm really trying to work really hard to get there. So thank you all for all the sharing you've done, the liking, the comments, the love, the support. Really appreciate it. So without further ado, let's move on. And I'm going to show you what I got. I'm also going to show you a couple other things that I think will go very well with it. But I'm going to tell you some of this stuff you are not going to believe. These are the Stampin' Blends that I ordered. There are several more, but I kind of figured I would concentrate first on the Halloween fall colors. But they also do have, um, I believe, let me pull this out from underneath. Here's the catalog. Isn't it funny? I just got this in the mail with my order. And I did get another box of them. So I have not gotten mine yet in the mail. So if you are a customer, customer of mine who has has requested a holiday catalog they have not come yet I will put a post when they come that way you can check your mailbox they usually all come within a few days of each other but I got this because I placed a pre-order so if you're a demonstrator you are able to pre-order now through August 31st the entire catalog which is pretty cool and they will send you one catalog with it when you order so yay, so fun however I can't show you the inside yet but Fear not. Again, your catalogs will be on the way, so keep your eyes on your mailbox. And once I get mine, because I always order one, that way I can tell you guys, like, oh, it should be coming, or maybe it did come. I'll let you know. But they do also have a couple other um, Stampin' Blends in here, aside from these. So we also got... I'm trying to find that one, and it's in the wrong other section. Hold on, I'm looking the wrong direction. It'd be so much easier when we can flip through these together. And again, I don't want to make this long and drawn out, because I know that's annoying when somebody's just 
you're staring at markers, staring, staring. Oh, okay. So they also have real red and shaded spruce. So we have Mango Melody. This is a new one. Cajun Craze. Blackberry Bliss. I'm sure that makes everybody happy because I know everybody loves this one. And black, which is pretty cool. So in addition to the gray, we also have black. So these are in, you can either buy them single light and dark, or you can buy them as a combo. They're still the same price, but if you, you know, if one sold out, you could buy them the other way for some reason, if the combos are sold out, but, um, these are all in and then they will have real red shaded spruce. And I feel like there's one more, but I have to look, but anyway, so these are all the new Stampin' Blends. I think again, I got the Halloweeny ones more. I probably should have gotten a green, but I'll do that on my next order because once again, as I said, I ordered some stuff that I didn't order it correctly. So Blondie strikes again, even though I wrote myself a list and took my time. <laughs> um, another really, really cool tool that I want to share with you guys. Oops, that's not it is the take your pick tool. This is new in the catalog. I'm sure some of you have seen this, but I'm just wanted to kind of go through with it, go through it with you a little bit so you could understand. So prior to this, I use, and of course it's not sticking out because I probably have it somewhere. I used this little uh, tool that I got on Amazon that it was double ended and it was tacky, which is really cool. I like it a lot, but this is pretty neat because it actually is, um, like four or five or six, depending which way you look at it, tools in one. So there's two ends to it. This end has putty, so it's like a putty tip, and that is way higher than it needs to be. So you got to be careful when you roll this out. You don't want to roll it too far because as you twist this, it makes the putty come out the end. But basically, this is tacky. So if you ever have trouble picking up, like, sequins, gosh, I should have had sequins out. That would make so much more sense. I can grab here. Okay, so if you had trouble picking up sequins... And say you wanted like, you only wanted star sequins. So you, you use this tip and it picks them up for you. Well, it probably picks them up better when you don't have a quarter inch of it sticking out. So let me see if I can get rid of a little bit of this. It's like a, it's a putty. So I'm actually going to just smush it down a little bit. That was my fault. I rolled it out too far. But anyway, so what you do is you pick these up and then you could get like just the hearts or just the stars or just the blue ones or whatever. So that is pretty cool. Um, this tool is $10. This is the order number. It will be available September 1st for customers and you can buy refill putty tips. So it does come with one refill putty tip, but basically what happens is as you screw this in, so I don't wanna screw it in anymore. As you screw this in, more putty comes out the end, okay? And then when you're not using it, you just wanna make sure that you press the cap on, it'll keep it from getting dry. And then the other end, <laughs> yeah, the spatula, that's a good idea. And then the other end either has a spatula. So you just put this in and you screw it to make it work. So you could scrape stuff up, pick stuff up if you needed to. It also has a paper piercing end. So instead of you having to have your multiple tools out at the same time, um, that's where I did it because I wanted to make sure that's not screwed in. You could use this as your paper piercer. It is a little bit bigger than our other one, but very uh, multi-use. And then you have two other things. If you're struggling again, or if you haven't bought all your tools, it does have a double tip stylus. So it has the small tip and it has, you can flip the other side, the large tip. So you could use this for scoring. If you're um, I'm trying to get that to come into focus, but it doesn't want to. There we go. So if you have your scoring and you're, you're using your, simply scored and you can't remember where you put your thing or whatever. So you do have one tool that you could use for all of these purposes, which is pretty cool. And it does come with a cap and the cap does fit all of the different pieces. So you don't have to worry about it. as long as you keep it capped up, it will all keep the tip from drying out number one. And then you can keep it from, you know, from anybody hurting themselves. Cause this is very pokey and this is, you know, like a spatula. So it's pretty neat pretty cool tool for 10 bucks. That's not bad that you get all of those things out of it. And, um, it does come with some instructions on the putty tip and whatnot. So you only want to use a little bit of putty. As you can see, you don't want to squirt it out to a half an inch. So keep this away from all your curious children or grandchildren. So rainbow stamper won't be touching that one. I can tell you that right now. And something else very cool that I want to show you that is out. Oops. Making a mess of my sequence here is this. Now, I ordered three of these. <clears throat> so, these are shimmer paints. Where's my other one? Oh, here it is. 
I ordered shimmer paints. So these are new in the catalog. There's actually four. So you have champagne mist and you can hear it. It's, you can like paint this on something. You probably put it in your spritzer and spritz it onto something, but it's all purpose ink. It says suitable for all, for all poor, ugh, porous surfaces, paper, fabric, wood, leather. So they also showed this using these really cute bags that they put in the catalog. They're Santa bags. So you could like decorate this or you could spritz it and then you could put like some treats in this for your kids for for Christmas or for Hanukkah or really for anything for fall if you have like some some cool school treats that you want to give out. So it comes in champagne. It also comes in frost white. So this is kind of like a snow. This will be really really cool for um, any snowflake cards if you want to give them a little bit of spritz but Personally, I have a little bit of trouble when I do like the glitter or that um, really fine glitter. It always still, I can never get it to stick very well. So this should be much thinner of a coat. And it also says that you can heat set it. So it will heat set so it will be on there permanently. This I definitely have to play with a little bit more because I've never used these. But obviously, they have a little shaky ball in there. So that should be pretty fun. <laughs> the pickup tool too, I know. I, you know, I was on pins and needles. I ordered this when I was still on vacation. And they had so many orders that it was a really long back order to ship. So, And then the other one they have is bright copper, which I love copper. So I figured that would be really fun. So this is. So the only one I didn't get was the Vegas gold. So not really super into gold, but you never know. I could change my mind. So those are the three paints, and they are $8 each. And again, these will be available in the new um, holiday catalog. Unless you want to sign up as a demonstrator, then you can order them. You can pre-order them now. So anyone that is a demonstrator are allowed to pre-order them now. Shaky ball, right? Yeah. Very technical term. <laughs> the shaky ball. All right. So let me scoot these over. And then I'm going to share with you a couple of the ribbons I got. So this one is really, really pretty. It's a burlap ribbon. This is kind of in with this really awesome farmhouse suite, which I did not order yet, but I ordered bits and pieces of things. So if you remember last year, we had a really thin um, burlap ribbon. So this is much thicker. This is probably about mm, a half of an inch at least. Really, really cool. But I like the fact that we could probably use it for multiple things. You could use it for bags. And speaking of bags, let me just digress just for one quick second. Someone shared, and I never even thought of this, but someone shared when they saw these from the Blended Seasons that you could use these for um, bag topper. So you could cut this out and fold it in half, and it would have the stitching on both sides. And you could use these for any size, because obviously they're in three different sizes. But basically, if you have your cellophane bag, you cut one of these out, you can fold it over, you could punch a hole in it, you could tie it with this ribbon. But super cool idea, and I wanted to share that in the beginning, but I, I totally forgot. So really cool idea, but you could use that with this ribbon. I'm glad it reminded me. And then the other one that I got was the Tranquil Tide. This is a velvet ribbon. It's really pretty. And if you remember in the um, other catalog, in the annual catalog, we had this ribbon. This was the Rich Razzleberry. So if you have this from your other catalog, you could use these two together. They'd be really pretty to use in the fall together. And then this one is a really fun one for Halloween. It is a glittered organdy ribbon. So really sparkly. This would be really cool for either Halloween if you had something or New Year's Eve. This would be great if you were making wedding invitations for like a New Year's or a Christmas, like a like an evening kind of wedding. This would be really, really pretty. So not just necessarily for Halloween. Lots of different ideas there. So it does have some glitter trapped into it. Very, very pretty. Super cool for a spooky witch card. And then the other one that I pulled out, this is one that's in the uh, annual catalog as well. It's a red ribbon. I thought this could go really well together if you were going to pair this ribbon. Say you were going to decorate and you wanted to add like a little bit of shine on top of it. You could layer this ribbon on top of it. So this is real red. And I believe it is um, an eighth of an inch. It's a solid ribbon. So super cool. Lots of ideas there with the ribbon. So let me move these over. And then I'm going to show you what else did I get. Oh, I got the Festive Farmhouse Cotton Twine because who doesn't like these? These are great colors too for Christmas as well. So looks kind of like, I'm going to say, if I were to make a guess, I would say kind of like, um, oh my gosh, I just had a complete blank out. Cranberry, not cranberry. Good look. Cherry Cobbler. Good Lord. I'm probably cranberry. People like, oh, they brought back cranberry. No, they didn't. <laughs> and 
then this is a really, it's kind of a combination, I'd say, between like, I'd say mossy meadow almost, and then a cream. So really, really pretty. Caught you from Iowa. Thanks for joining, Marianne. I appreciate it. Welcome to everybody that all has just recently stopped in. Remember, you can always go back and watch this from the beginning. It always posts on the replay. Okay, so let me show you a few things, and then I'm going to show you where I goofed up. So number one, we have this gorgeous glimmer paper. Again, it is a three pack. Let me see how this opens from the side because you know I always have to get the glimmer paper. Really pretty copper, I would say. Gorgeous, gorgeous red. Very, very vivid red. I really like that. So it's kind of, actually this might be Mary. It's like a combo between Merlot, like a wine and a red, really pretty. And then this beautiful green. How gorgeous are those three colors together? Super, super pretty. So I can't wait to use this. Might be Mary Merlot. You never know. Even that could be, the ribbon could be Mary Merlot as well. So really pretty for that. Let me get this thing off of here so I can see you guys. And then this one also has a really beautiful um, paper that goes with it. I'm gonna show you that one first. It's a designer series paper, and it's called Joyous Noel. It is a specialty paper, so you guys remember when it's a specialty paper. Hey, Suzanne. It's only printed on um, one side. All right, let me see if I can do this without wrecking it. Okay, so this has a lot of uh, shine to it. Really, really pretty. I love this piece. I love, love, love this piece. It's so Christmassy and soft. And it's got that shimmer in it. Oh, I love that piece. And then this one with the gold snowflakes. And see how I'll say like, it's not really gold. Is it gold or is it copper? It's kind of, I don't know, hard to tell, gold or copper. But I'll say like, I don't really like gold, but look how beautiful that looks together. So Mary Merlot and either the gold and copper. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And then we have these adorable reindeer with the stars, how sweet is that? I also like this one very much. And this is definitely, it's copper. Berries, how cute, it's so pretty, so sparkly. And then the vine, love this vine. And remember, so you don't get rid of your um, your packaging, it tells you all of the colors it goes with on the back. So that goes with gray granite, Mary Merlot, Sahara sand, soft suede, tranquil tide, and whisper white. But look how pretty all that is. And then that will go so well with this because these are kind of in a combo. So this clearly must be Mer Mary Merlot and then Shaded Spruce. That's the colors it said it went with. But beautiful, beautiful, beautiful combos right there. All right. And before I go to the rest of the paper, I'm going to show you a couple other things that I got stamp-wise. So I got this awesome background stamp. I'm sure everybody has seen that. And it is um, Buffalo Check. Super cool. You can make lots of fall cards, you know, for your favorite hunters. <laughs> hunters and gatherers. Everybody loves plaid. That's a really cool, cool background stamp. And then I got this. So this goes, this is a bundle. You get this punch. And then they have this really fun stamp set. It's got all these different little bulbs here. And they say merry and bright. How cute is that? Lots of definitely decorative ideas for like background stamps. And you could make tags with these. Oh my gosh, adorable. But the coolest part is there is another stamp set that coordinates with this punch in there. And I don't want to say it's more, um, it's not that it's more generic to not Christmas. It's just more kind of a general stamp. And if I had it, I would share it with you. But it has, it's got Easter in it. It has Valentine's Day. There are, um, there's a cobweb. There's a feather. A penguin pine cones it's so 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 cute really really cute and it's kind of more of like an all season I will say in the catalog this year I have noticed that there's also a couple of stamp sets that are very non-holiday so you could use them for anything which I think is kind of cool that they added a few things in because a lot of people you know one of the people in my stamp club she does not like to make Christmas cards and so she said well what am I going to want the holiday catalog for well first of all Halloween because I love Halloween and second of all Christmas but there are a lot of really cool stamp sets in here that have nothing to do with a wintertime holiday which is kind of cool so I like that there's a lot of variety in here as well so this is a bundle 
And then the other one that I intended to get, but I didn't, I only got the stamp set. This has an absolutely adorable um, die set that goes with it. And the reason that I need the die is why I want to share this with you. Two reasons, really, because it has this incredibly cute <laughs> designer series paper. So let me pop this open so I can show you. And these, this little witch, she so cute. So, so cute. The coolest part, though, is the part that I can't share with you because I forgot to order that part of it. But it has this really awesome thinlet that's a cobweb. So cool. So you have these little witches. And then you have black cats on orange paper. And I'm so happy Stampin' Up! went with white this year instead of cream. Because the cream, the very vanilla last year, completely threw me off for a loop with planning my cards. So you have the purple stripes and the ghosts, which are super cool. We have pumpkins and witches' brooms, which are awesome. <laughs> It's so much better seeing these in person. And then you have cauldrons and the cats. And the dies fit this little cat. It fits the cauldron. I'm so ashamed of myself that I didn't order correctly. Then we have green dots on the other side. And then we have witch hats, which are so fun. So, so fun. You could also fussy cut these out. And frogs everywhere. How adorable are these? I love it. So cute. And then we have bats and stars. I need to make a set to go with the footprint punch with a magnify. Oh, that's a great idea. Absolutely. Yeah. Super idea. Okay, so that is Toil and Trouble Designer Series Paper. And then that goes with Cauldron Bubble. And then there's this adorable die set. So the die has a little uh, cobweb in the background. And then it has, obviously, it has a framelit for the cat, for the hat, for the cauldron, for the witch. I'm not sure about the broom. But let me show you this one other paper. And this is, when I saw this in the catalog, or actually I should say, when I was stalking people on the cruise and I saw this, and I thought, did I just see what I thought I saw? And then when I looked through the catalog, oh my goodness, I almost squeezed my pants. Okay, and a punch that matches the hats. So, look at this black foil sheets, but it's like holographic. How cool is that? Isn't that awesome? So it's got like that purpley undertone to it. So can you imagine this with cobwebs cut out of it and then you could put them on top of the cauldron? Oh my gosh, guys. I love Halloween. Halloween is truly one of my favorite. I know a lot of people don't, don't do Halloween. They don't like Halloween. But for me, it always reminds me of growing up and being young and dressing up. And I always, almost always had homemade costumes. One year I was a genie. Kind of like I Dream of Jeannie, but my mom made me the costume. And it was the neatest costume. It was out of really, really old fabric. And I, oh, I love that costume. I wish I still had it because I would somehow get somebody to wear it so you could see it. But anyway, so this is really cool black foil sheets. Let me put this over and see if I can do it without making a mess. Because I don't want to scratch up that paper. <laughs> okay, and then we have, this is the All is Bright Designer Series paper. Another really pretty one. <laughs> Halloween is your birthday. Oh my gosh, Janet, that's awesome. I think you probably told me that once before. What a fun birthday to have. <laughs> that's so cool. So we have this beautiful paper with the lights in it. And it's so, it really looks like the depth that it is lights lit up. Really cool. Yeah, it's scared by your bullpen. Really I can understand that. A lot of people don't, especially, you know, little kids don't like Halloween either. So I totally can get that, Donna, but... Halloween is a holiday I really enjoy. You have your little um, bulbs, Christmas bulbs, and a beautiful green background. So there's a lot of very, um, it's like a vivid and then a really neutral one. These will be, this sheet would be beautiful if you were making like a New Year's Eve or a New Year's Eve wedding card. I know a lot of people get married like New Year's Eve. They start the year and that's what they want to do. And then it's got a really pretty, these are, um, it's funny because these are pine cones, but they almost look like coral. Like very um, Versamarked coral. So that's really pretty as well. And then you have the little stars. And the stockings. How cute are they? Can you order the holiday book? You can order out of the holiday catalog, Sherry. Absolutely you can. Um, at, because you're a demonstrator, you're able to. You can order through the 31st. And then as of September 1st, everyone can order, including customers. So it might be a little busier at that point. But you can pre-order if you're a demonstrator, 100%. The only thing is you won't have an actual catalog. You just have to look at it online. So we have the red 
And then again, this is really, it looks like you're looking at actual, it's all, it'd be better if you had some uh, pine essential oils and then you could really pretend like you're actually looking at this. The coral sheet with the octopus set, absolutely. And then a poinsettia or a poinsettia, depends on tomato, tomato. And again, these really pretty gold. This just reminds me of someone who would get married at Christmas with like that soft gold look. Make beautiful invitations if you're thinking of getting married. Okay, so that is the All is Bright. And that goes kind of along with this set right here with the stamps and the punch. And... Sorry, I'm trying to make room so I don't knock anything over. There's another really cute one, Spooky Sweets. This is great for um, uh, any treats that you're making for Halloween. Treat bags. Also has a coordinating bat punch. You could punch black bats out of that black foil paper. You can punch these guys because they coordinate exactly. So you could stamp them and punch them. Really fun. But this would be great if you're making treats for um, your grandkids or your kids for Halloween for school. So I'll be using this for sure for school. That's a really fun set. And plus it's got that little creepy looking background. So then another one that I was going to get. And once again, I picked the wrong thing when I selected it. I thought I got the bundle, but I only got the dies like a goof. So this is called Santa's Signpost. However, I do actually have some paper to share with you for this one. This one is also another um, specialty designer series paper. So let me pop this one out. These are just so cute. Elves and you have Mrs. Claus. And again, I'm going to save this because I always like to know what colors it coordinates with. But look at these. So all of these dies coordinate. So you could just, you don't even have to do any work. You could just cut everybody out. So you have that how cute look the little signpost and these actually believe it or not there is a raised part to this so you can feel it these little these little snowballs here if you can see them they're raised super cute how cute is that there's a little christmas though look you could even stamp this if you actually order the stamp set correctly and take your time unlike me cut this out you could stamp something on there like to the treats the other thing that was really neat was it does have a little snowflake cut out so that'd be really fun as well so you have two sheets of this I don't think I would even use this side because these guys over here are just too adorable for words you could cut a strip of them and put them on the front of your card that would be really cute as well they actually have flocking on them too on the hats on the white all the white has flocking so the white has flocking and then you have these little raised snowflakes that have flocking on them how adorable are they and then we have snowmen juggling sleeping getting presents how cute Oh my God, so cute, so, so cute. And Christmas trees, which are equally cute. But again, I don't know. Sometimes I get so stuck on the one side of this paper, which is probably why I order more than one pack. Then you have your little lines of elves. How cute are they? I know I love when they have that as well. It makes it easier. And then some dots, but these elves are too cute not to use. And then we have decorating a Christmas tree. How cute, little rocking horse trying to climb up on and put the star, oh my goodness, so, so dear. And then that's just like a dotted pattern, but really pretty. This would be great if you were gonna put, like say you were gonna cut this little scene out, you could put this as your background sheet if you could part with it. And then this one is really neat, okay? So this is a candy cane stripe, but it's red and you can, there's a difference, and raised white flocking, hear that? So cute. Now this also has bows on the other side, but I don't think I could resist using this side. <laughs> okay, and then one last one. And this one, I believe, does this go with this? No, this one goes with, oh, with the Santa here. So you have Santa, like, chilling. This reminds me of Polar Express, if anybody's ever seen that. That's my son's, like, all-time favorite movie because of the train, I think. And then you have your little die up here that can cut out Santa. But, again, this has flocking on it. All the white parts, almost all the white parts have flocking. So cute. Your little stack of presents. The train. Ooh, he's going to like that one. But it also has a lot. There's a lot of other die cuts to cut out stuff here. I just would have to look at it and take my time to match them up. And then the other side is candy canes, which is adorable. So super, super, super fun. So once again, this one was called Santa's Workshop Specialty Designer Series Paper. 
So let me put all these back. And again, this does have a coordinating stamp set, which I forgot to order, so I'll have to get that one. It has a stamp set and it has a uh, matching die set. So lots of fun for that. It's funny when you're trying to put stuff down so you don't wreck it. <laughs> okay, so two other really fun ones, and these are um, some, some things that I kind of wish I would have gotten more of it, and I'm going to have to put these in. So this is a corrugated... This is one of the dynamics, so it's one of the fatter embossing folders. So it, it's kind of made to look like corrugated paper, you know, like that cardboard paper. This was so adorable with some of the, like, country fall uh, cards that they had in there and the stamps and whatnot. And then the other thing they had with this was there's a really pretty stamp set, and I cannot remember what it's called right now, but it's, it's trees. And it looks like birch trees, and then they have, like, a little grouping of low pine trees. They made the coolest card with this. So really fun, easy way to make backgrounds. You could use this with crumb cake, soft suede, Sahara sand, but it'll make, like, that corrugated background look. And then this one was the one that really got me. So I think there's also one other paper here I forgot. This is the, because um, there's one more that goes with the thing I want to show you. But this one is like, I'm saving it for last because I was super impressed with it. So this goes with the farm stamp set. So this is called Festive Farmhouse. And this has like a truck and a tree in the background. That was also the one that kind of coordinated with this uh, corrugated embossing folder I was showing you. So this has plaid. Who doesn't love plaid? And stars. This is very, it could be very Christmassy or it could just be very country. And I, I love both of those. It has the stripes and then this wood grain background. Oh my gosh, how beautiful are these colors together? And then we have this other, it's like a tartan plaid and then stripes. And then you have like this plank floor, which also would be really great for a beach card with the octopus or the mer not the mermaid. Well, the mermaids, if you still had the mermaids, sure, the mermaids would look really cute too. But like a beachy floor card, would love that. Would love that floor in my house. And then on the other side, Peace on Earth, Merry Christmas has a lot of really beautiful words. And then last but not least, look how pretty that is. Such a soft plaid. I love that. And then the other side is like a red square. And they really coordinate super well together. I think that's the part I like. Oh, I missed one. One more. That's the part I like the best. Everything coordinates so well. And then we have stars. Stars and stripes. But just in a different pattern. <laughs> so stars and stripes, which are really, really pretty. So that goes with the, um, the whole festive farmhouse bundle. So again, that has everything... All the colors that it coordinates with on the back. So don't forget that. That's always handy to know. Okay, so this is one of the things that I love the most. And it reminds me of my old basement in my townhouse. My first house that I bought. So my house was, you know, just like a regular looking townhouse on the top. But when you went downstairs, it kind of looked like you were walking into a bar. It was really cool. Had such awesome lights. My grandfather built a bar for the house for me. And this paper. So this is a tile, tin tile dynamic folder. So it's going to make it look like a tin tile. And I had a tin ceiling in this basement. So I thought this was epically cool. But it also has galvanized metallic paper. So that's also something else new in the catalog. So it's supposed to look like galvanized metal. It definitely is not sh just shiny. It has a lot of texture to it. Kind of like that Subtles embossing folder that until you actually see it used, you can't appreciate how cool it is in person. So when you run this through this, it's going to give this galvanized detail to it. But you can also, and I'm not 100% sure because I just opened this, so I haven't used it yet. It is same side, so it's going to be either side you can use. There's only two sheets. But you can probably either use some ink to, like, rough it up a little bit. Or maybe even running this through might rough up the paper a little bit. But this one, I'm dying to try just to be able to try it. So is this not so, so neat? I love this. Love this folder. So again, it's one of the thicker folders, so it's going to give you a really deep edge into this paper. 
I'm not sure about the wetting of this paper because I know sometimes when you, you use these, they do suggest that you wet them because it will make the paper a little more pliable. So I think I'm going to try this dry first and then wet to see what the difference is and make sure that, you know, nothing falls apart because this paper is so, 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 so gorgeous. Really, really cool. Okay, and there is still one more paper I forgot to pull out. This one is a special paper that is going to be available for... Um, customers or demonstrators who have a qualifying party in September and this is called dashing along designer series paper so they made this paper they said it's a combination of some old favorites and some new ones um, they I, I'm not sure exactly what they brought back versus what is new let me move this out of the way just so I can show you but it's really great for backgrounds for cards so you have these really pretty stars and then this newsprint so it's very like the newsprint is kind of almost a throwback to when we had that paper that was a newsprint but it's definitely it's thicker than that was that was very thin but you have the print on it and you get four so you get four of each so you have the stars and the print and they're both in the same shade you have these little snowflakes Ooh, and those stripes wow that's a lot for my eyes only because I have some issues with migraines but just between those two patterns they're very pretty I really like this one would be a great background for a card Christmas card <laughs> try different stuff I try my best Donna <laughs> this one is so pretty I love this filigree it reminds me of like a really old time like um back in the wild wild west they would have this probably like a velour wallpaper how cool is that and then the other side really pretty poinsettias and the little leaves so you get four of those as well so you get 12 sheets total so again let me just pull these back up so you have those you have these and then you also have oops that one doesn't belong in there you also have the stars and the print so these are pretty you can only get these if you have a qualifying party during the month of September unless you are a demonstrator and the last day to pre-order I believe is tomorrow I could be wrong but it's tomorrow so really pretty paper lots of stuff you can use for backgrounds for Christmas cards if you have um, you could also use some of this for non Christmas cards if you wanted to you could use like a winter card if you wanted to or just a really festive birthday card would be really pretty stars I mean I love that and this background very neutral as well this you could use just as a floral background if you wanted to kind of make it like a little bit countryed up you could use the flowers for that so that is the last I have to share with you I wish I had more because I didn't do two things correctly so I'm a little bit um bummed about that whole situation but anyway so this catalog again if you're a demonstrator you can order from this through the end of the month and then for customers you should they said they should usually be shipped um, the last week of August so they're probably gonna start shipping them next week and I'm assuming you would get them the week after so once I get mine again I will tell you guys about it that way you know and that way you can kind of keep your eye out but look at all the cute ideas on here the little plaid and they have like a vellum overlay and then this box looks like it's made out of the glimmer paper How cute is that here's the bag that little Santa bag and they stamped the little um, string of lights and colored it in with the stamp and blends which is a super cool idea and then you could spray that shimmer paint on top of it you could make tags and you have your little christmas bulbs here but again remember there's a whole nother stamp that goes with this so you could also make if you were if you gave out like little valentine's gifts to whoever it may be and then this really cool card this card looks so so realistic if you can appreciate how realistic that looks and once you get your catalog you'll see in person it looks like it is a window card that has um like something on the inside oh my gosh my brain is apparently asleep it has like evergreen on the inside it's so neat but it's actually just that paper that paper is so so vivid and lots of beautiful stuff so without further delay let's make a quick card and just because I'm dying to use it let's let's use the galvanized paper because I really 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 want to see how that turns out so I was gonna make one completely different but we'll do this one instead so we're gonna make this I don't know what we're gonna do with it yet so bear with me here Let me move all these blends up and out of the way let's see if I can move some of these things so I don't 
wreck the joint before I've even used anything. All right, I'm gonna move this over. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim out a piece of this. Let me move all this stuff onto the floor. I'm sorry, just bear with me one second. I gotta grab my trimmer and my big shot. So since I really don't know how to use it, I'm not going to use a full background. I'm going to just trim up a piece for now. And then we'll fool with it from there. So let me move. I don't want to scratch it. I'm going to use this piece. Move this over. And I'm really dying to use that holographic paper too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut. I'm going to cut a piece that's four because I typically cut my cardstock up at four anyway because you figure if you're using like a layered sheet, you'd use four inches. So I'm going to put this piece on the side and then I'm going to trim this down just to have like a two. What do I want to do? All right, I'm going to, I'm going to do it the way I normally would do it. I'm going to cut this one at five and a quarter. And then I'm going to trim off a long piece because I want to have a long piece maybe going down the center of the card. So I'm going to cut this at two inches. Okay, so I'm going to set this on the side so I don't ruin it. And then we're going to run this through this piece. We'll see what it looks like. Cross your fingers that we don't mess it up. Okay, and if you recall, when you make your, um, your sandwich and you have one of these these big folders, you want to take most of your adapters out. So you don't want your thin die adapter and you only want one of your cutting plates. Okay. So I'm going to put this in and I'm going to kind of center it. I'm going to center it. So it's kind of in the middle. That way it doesn't have a hard, a hard edge and I end up kind of goofing it up. So I'm going to center it in the middle, just like that. And we'll see what it looks like. So I'm going to fold this down. Okay. I'm going to put this. So I have just my regular cutting platform, my sandwich with the paper in it, and one cutting pad. Let's see if this works. Hopefully I didn't mess it up when I laid it down. We'll see what this looks like just like this. Whoa. Look how cool that is. It really does look like a tin ceiling. So cool. And you have the debossed or the embossed side. Really, really neat. Okay, so now what I'm going to do just to take it a step further and see what I can do with it is you could probably do this ahead of time if you wanted to. You could put ink down and it would rub it on top of there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, I just have a sponge dauber and some soft suede. And I'm going to just take my sponge dauber, just to see, and some soft suede and just rub it. Rub it on here and see what it looks like. Let me grab my I kind of have like a, uh, this is one of those like lint-free towels you can get from like the auto store. So I want to see what this looks like if you add this to it. And if not, the other thing you might be able to do, so it definitely does stain. As you can see that there is definitely stain on there. Not stain, it colors I should say. I don't know what the other side looks like. I'm going to try just the deep off side just for the heck of it while we're at it. So it kind of gives it like that rusty tin seal. Now that sticks in there a little bit more. It's probably not very easy to see, but they're definitely, this is regular color and then over here is darker. But you probably also, if you wanted to, I'm just gonna take, again, just trying to play with it. This is just my bone folder, and I'm gonna kinda just like rub it across. I'm not sure if you can scrape the edges. So it definitely does get rough looking if you hit it on the edges, just like any other paper. But I'm wondering if you can. All right, here's what I'm gonna do. Let me see. Is one of them. I'm gonna try this. I don't know if I have any. already have water in them. So I have my, my Stampin' Spritzer. Now that I'm dying of curiosity, I'm going to put a little bit of water in this real quick. So just talk amongst yourselves for one second. Okay, 
sorry about that. Try to be as quick as I can. I want to wet a piece of this and run it through just to see what it does. Because I'm just curious if it will break it up a little bit more or not. Let me put this over here. So I have my other little piece here. So I'm going to do that. So this. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do the same thing. So I have my folder, my paper. I'm going to just spritz it just a little bit, just to see what it does. And I'm just going to spritz it on top of this so it doesn't get too wet. Okay, so it's not terrifically wet. And I'm going to put this one here again, just like that, and run it through. This is the Tin Tile Dynamic Textured Impressions Embossing Folder. It's a mouthful, isn't it? <laughs> All right, let's see what this looks like. Oh, so it's definitely, it is higher. It definitely gives it a higher feel. It didn't rip it up any, which is good. Because you never know, like, if you add water to it. But it definitely, it, it has embossed it at a whole deeper level, believe it or not. So you definitely can... Uh, add water to it without any problem and then one other thing you could do but I just don't know that I could line this up exactly but I'm gonna try because I love you guys and I like to do things and see if they work what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my actually I'm gonna go with a darker I'm gonna put some early espresso up here okay and you can do that all you have to do is wipe off your embossing folder normally I would have used like a brayer or something but I'm trying not to, to bore you to death make sure I do this correctly if this is sticking up that goes that way so I'm gonna try it one more time okay so I'll put this down here now I normally would have done this all at once Is this the right direction no I normally would have done this all at once but since I already cut it and I only have two sheets of paper. <laughs> I'm going to do it in baby steps. So I'm going to do this one more time. I'm just going to run this through. So normally if I was going to do this, I would have just done it the first time I cut the paper. All right, so let's see what it looks like. So I would normally put the ink on the top, spritz the paper a little bit. Definitely, well, I did this the kind of the backwards way, I seem to think. But anyway, I'm going to show you no matter what. So you have this deep ink into that and then you could wipe off some of it if you wanted to but that's pretty cool but I definitely will say use the water don't use a lot of water because you don't want your paper paper to be so flimsy but look at the difference between the two of those that's pretty cool so it looks like a a rusted tin roof tin roof rusted as uh b52 say <laughs> I still don't know what that means. If anybody does, feel free to explain it to me. Okay, so now we're going to make this into a card. So let's do some... I have a nice piece here of dark gray. That'll be pretty cool on there. And then we'll do some... We'll do something with a whisper white. So let me score this. So again, if you didn't, if your your um, scoring blade was out, you could use that new tool if you wanted to. So we'll score this at five and a half. Let me make sure I have this actually trimmed to be four and a quarter because sometimes I use my paper for different stuff. Okay, so we have four and a quarter by eleven. Score at five and a half. I'm gonna put this piece on top of it. This ways. You know what I think it could use is another sheet of paper. So I'm gonna also add a piece of gray granite. And I'm going to just trim this down to four by five and a quarter. Let me go with five and a quarter. Actually, does this one? Yeah, that'll be perfect. Five and a quarter by four because then this piece will layer onto it completely just like that. Okay, so we have those. There we got that so far. And we're going to add something to it. Yes, absolutely. As a great addition to your craft room. All right, let's see. What do you want this to say? I got out a whole bunch of um, sentiments because I kind of, what I wanted to do as before I got started with this thing is 
I was going to use that buffalo check. Oh, best dad ever. How about it? Perfect. Getting an early start on our Father's Day card, guys. <laughs> so we'll do best dad ever. But we're going to do this different. We're going to we're going to make it look a little bit rougher. I'm going to add some. I'm going to add these little wheat things. I'm going to add that. We're going to do a piece that goes straight across. I had a piece of Whisper White laying around here. And now I don't know. Oh, there it is. I don't know what I did with it. I found it. So I'm going to do a piece that kind of goes across but not all the way. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this up. See, that's a pretty slim piece. So I'm going to do it at one and three quarters for now. One and three quarters. But I don't want it to go the whole way across. So I'm going to do one and three quarters by. So four would be the base. What if I'll do three and a half for now and see what that looks like. That might be still a little too wide. I'm going to take it down to one and a quarter. All right, so I think I decided on one and a quarter by three and a half. Yeah, I still don't like that. I think it's too fat. We'll do one because I don't want it to be just look, so it looks like it's blocky. And again, sometimes when you try too hard, it makes things more difficult than they need to be. So I got one by three and a quarter. All right, that's what we're going to stick with for now. And then we also have all these other little scraps of paper. If you wanted to, you could like rough these up and lay them in the background in some fashion. I don't really exactly know how, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp. This was gray granite, so I'm going to stamp in gray granite. I'm just going to stamp these little wheat leaves all over it. Not really for the wheat leaf part, but just for like a little bit of something interest-wise. Worst case scenario, if we don't like it, we can always flip it over and use the other side that's blank. And they can cross because remember that only that one part's going to cover up the middle. So I'm just kind of filling in space. So you can't really exactly tell what they are, but it just gives like some visual interest to the background. And you could also do this without re-inking too. So, or if this is a little too dark for you, you could do um, smoky slate and you could even stamp it off. So I'm going to go just, I'm going to do a little bit of smoky slate just to fill this in. Oh, is it too conflicty? No, I like it. We'll go with it. We'll see what it looks like at the end. Worst case scenario is we just won't make this card anymore. So I am going to say, if you're going to use, I'm just using snail to be quick. I would definitely use uh, Tombow glue for this because it's going to get into the grooves better and it's going to hook onto the paper a little bit better. I'm going to line that up kind of in the center as much as I can. Give that a good press. And while we're at it, I know this is an, an, it's a different color, but I'm going to just do the edges with the early espresso. Still kind of a neutral color. So just to give the card a little bit of depth. If you ever don't know what to do with your card, sponging is a really good idea just to bring in something. Because it kind of gives like that worn look to it. Oh, this is coming along better than I thought now. Okay, you could always do this on the other part if you wanted to. And then we're going to put this down onto our base card. So I'm going to pop this. Oops, I might have gone a little high with that. Pop this on. Okay, just like that. All right, now we got to figure out our sentiment. So best dad ever. I was originally going to stamp this dude on here. I don't know what that's going to look like now, though, if it's too much repeating. And the funny part is, guys, just so you know, I'm talking to all of you, but I also talk to myself like this when I make cards. <laughs> just randomly, just talking to myself. And as long as I don't answer myself, I figure I'm okay. Let's see, that's a little too short. All right, so let's see. 
Oh, you know what another cool idea will be? And I'm going to have to see if I have my uh, my puncher to make holes. We have those new brads. We could put them in the end of this like we riveted it onto the card. Okay, I'm going to stamp on the back of this just because I haven't used this stamp before. Okay, and I'm going to try my best to line it up straight. Perfect. Wow, that was a miracle. <laughs> you answer yourself too. Good. I don't feel so bad then. <laughs> it makes me feel at least slightly better. And I'm going to say one other thing. If you haven't gotten yourself a Stampin' Chamois or you don't have something similar to this, I haven't even really been using my spritzer as much anymore. This thing is awesome because it really gets into like all the little nooks and crannies good because it's so fat. So just so you know, let me grab my um, brads. find them. So I did my brads. All right, now, mm, I don't know that I have a paper, a piercer that's going to fit. I really don't think I do. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to just, I have just a little scalpel here. I'm going to just put a little hole in here. Probably shouldn't be doing that on this mat underneath of me, but all right, let's see. It'll do once for one time. I do need to get myself a new uh, handheld punch, clearly, because I don't have any. So I'm going to use a tiny brad. So I have a tiny silver. Let's see if I can get that in there. Yeah, this would be totally better if you actually had a, uh, a thing that fits. So FYI. If you still have your uh, Cropodile, which I know everybody still loves, I don't have a Cropodile, but I heard they're amazing. Or if you have your hole punch, it will work infinitely better than me trying to get this in this little mangled hole this way, but you know, got to make do sometimes. All right, I'm going to poke this one through the other end, and I'm going to pop this up on dimensionals. Turn this to the side. Uh, save this. My dad's birthday is in May. And we clearly know Father's Day is in the, a good while. I could always add a little wreath to it and give it to him for Christmas. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to add just a little bit of this since I have it on here. Just to kind of keep with the cohesion of the color scheme. This was just some like leftover. I think it was uh, soft suede. I don't think we ended up using early espresso. So just a little soft suede. I'm going to go a little bit on the top just so it kind of looks like a little beat up. My grandfather would totally love this because it's all rough looking and my bone folder and I'm just going to take the edges and just run it along there kind of mess it up whoever thought I certainly wasn't planning on making a, a dad card I thought we were going to make something for Halloween or Christmas today <laughs> we're very prepared for next year I'm going to just put some dimensionals on the back and this is you can see is like my end sheet of dimensionals but I use these things until the bitter end a lot of times these corners are great for little spots like this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this little piece in half and I'm going to use these to cover up the brads just so they have kind of a little pop spot there just like that all right and we're going to wrap this up in one minute so again if you don't already I would love to be your demonstrator you can get all these supplies and more well you can't get the the uh, holiday stuff until September 1st. Unless you're a demonstrator, then you can get it. So you're welcome to join the team. Let's see. Like up there, that kind of looks too much like a cross. We'll put that in the center. In my online store, 24-7, it's reachthestamper.stampinup.net. How fun! How awesome is that? Look at that. Your dad would love that galvanized steel. You know he likes that. You know what you could use this for too? Which I tried a while ago to make this, and it turned out horribly with the sparkle. Um, texture uh, with the embossing folder if you remember it looks like um, like sheet metal that has those little rivets in it how cool would that be super cool card for your dad your dad would love that or your granddad or your brother or your uncle or your husband you know any of those dudes in your life um, we all have some dude that would love this card <laughs> but you can get all these supplies and more in my online store. I will have to do my second pre-order so I can um, get the rest of the stuff that I should have gotten the first time and share it with you guys. But this was pretty fun. So this is a new, this is the tin, tin tile. 
dynamic textured impressions embossing folder how fun is that love this super cool card and you could make this in any color scheme you don't have to make it just gray but it does look pretty neat probably should have centered it over just a little bit but let's see if i can move it Nah, it's on there. It's going to stay right where it is. You could add lots of other stuff to this if you wanted to. You could make the inside. You could do a, a print of, you could take your embossing folder and you could run your white paper through with like a really light gray would be really cool. And then you could just take your, your chamois. It's not going to get in the nooks and crannies quite as good because mine is kind of dry. But you could just run this underwater and the ink will come right off of it doesn't harm it whatsoever do this all the time with embossing folders another way to get a cool impression on it so this is something that's going to be in the holiday catalog so thank you guys so very much for joining me today i really appreciate this impromptu gathering that we all had together and i will be back tomorrow at 9 30 eastern standard time wednesday is my regular day in case you forgot and we will figure out something to make then spacing your orders out christina i hear you I hear you 100%. I have to be on a a, uh, a stamping budget now until hopefully my stamping up career takes off a little bit more. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining. I really appreciate it. I hope you have an awesome day. And I believe um, Linda and Tammy are on in a little while. They're going to be doing the stamping scoop. I'm fairly certain they're doing that today. So make sure you pop on over and check them out. Otherwise, I will see you guys tomorrow. And I'll post a picture of this and everything on the blog later on. Thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.